just gotten off the plane. A long time ago, we still had dirt around here. So, señores, not the Catupera limousine. We're going to board that plane. La Vieja is going to turn around, señores. Okay. And then we're going to go down the Hacienda. Yeah. The Hacienda Jalisco. It was seven haciendas where 30 people were working for. Right? The seven haciendas is businesses, señores. If you hear Hacienda, senores, you most likely think of a Ponderosa, yeah. of a ranch, a couple of cattle and cows. Not necessarily, senores. Yeah? Hacienda, the, the word Hacienda comes from the word Hacer. Hacer means to do or to make. So, what basically Hacienda is, is a factory, senores. And up here, what do you need Haciendas for? Because you cannot go in a mine with a hammer and a chisel and get a silver bar falling out. No, you only get rocks, senores. He human hearts to make the gods tranquil again, to calm them down. And that's where the bleeding starts. Have you heard about it? Tenochtitlan, senores. The Aztec Empire had 12 pyramids, and a pyramid is not a grave. It's temple to offer. It's temple to, to do sacrifices. And, uh, and, 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 and the killing that will really impact the making of the you start to kill a lot of these soldiers now. The soldiers will voluntarily sacrifice. Why? You die an honor dad, you're going to be reborn as a higher standard. That will be. These are points, are they? Oh, were they? Oh. These are poinsettias. Oh. Yes, they're up in the hill. The protection, all their windows um, and guns face into a river. And the only way to come in would be um, by a bridge. This is the front or the back of it. Often, so the constantly you have to put firewood in it, right? There was people, there were lots of people working, senores, yeah? So the mining was only of hammer and chisel, then they will have to look for new silver veins in the mines. They were boiling water inside the mines. All that firewood they were breeding, senores, yeah? That smoke. And then here's a very good mercury melting metals, uh, all these exhaustions, you know, a miner had a life expectancy of 40 years. 40 years. And the only thing to have power here, that was muscle power, you know, the, the first 200 years. And that was the problem. And it doesn't matter if the miner only made 40 years because his kids were born here. And they're already waiting of working up the depth of the parents. All right, so that was the thing. But now, you know, yeah. They were brought from the mines. So the problem was not the melting, the problem was to crush those metals, those rocks. That's a version of grinding wheel still, you see that? And the only thing who could have moved that thing that was... Uh, uh, Very good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you <laughs> the answer, the answer in Italian if I do that. You see what I'm saying, Fiona? <laughs> yeah. so, wherever she can end with it and stuff, it's no metal. The metal. And then they took those and small rows and that was nothing. And then it's often in the gold is a lead, and then you have... It and it's probably in the mines as well. Uh, so factory. 40 years, that was the max a mine I got. So now all six haciendas work like this. The problem was to crash those metals, to move those mules, senores. Yeah. After two, three hours, you go to 15 years ago, you will have your mule, senores. They're yeah, working. But only five years of exhausting, senores. There's a big hill back there, they buried all of them. The so now, senores, once you had the so silver perv, right, of course, you have the dogs, and then we'll back patio of the hacienda. Beautiful garden. And we're just coming into some of the kitchen. So now we're in the kitchen. Sorry. We are now in the kitchen. Kitchen, yeah. <laughs> Back in the patio. Mm. 
nicer. Mm. Beautiful wall that they built in stone. So the wall, the doorways here are quite plain. So the more tile work is a more expensive house to build. Okay, he's taking pictures. And then they're looking around here. Quite pretty. Quite well. Uh, this is the original ceiling. This is on the front of the hacienda. Apparently there was uh, houses all along here. But this is the last standing house. And, and the poinsettia, look. The man living yeah, in there. The oh, there you and go. he runs a hotel oh. in the top floor for those who want to stay la, there. La, la, there is a la, road la, coming la. up here now, and um, so that can work fine. This here is a death mask. It was used um, for the people who had passed away because they had lived so far away from uh, the neighbors that they would make a death death mask of the person so that after they were buried people could kill, still come and see the person's uh, face and know that it was them and know that yes they had passed away and apparently in 1850 I believe is when they made cameras and uh, they no longer needed to do the death mask so uh, there's a death mask pretty interesting inside sort of a, a uh, area of the room and what he was showing us is there's a lot of um, paintings on the wall give you that illusion that it's uh, wallpaper, but it was hand painted. And quite a few of the walls have that. Um, and it, when you're looking at it, whoever did it was quite talented because it really does give you the illusion of, of wood stickied out and uh, whatever. Now the ceiling apparently is not original. <laughs> It, it's something that's been replaced. And um, the windows, beautiful wooden windows. And uh, it's beautiful. About the work on this wall, which is very uh, Roman kind of looking. It looks like wood, but really it's painted on. It's in a bedroom here, so it's really quite unique. Um, it's all been painted on. Um, it looks like wallpaper, but it's really, really something to look at because if you're not here, you would really think that that was uh, wooden. And there's also some down around the bottom, only done by paint. Absolutely amazing. This paper here is San Sebastian in 19, 1891 or 97, and it's um, the transactions that took place here and what people owed. Here is for 1904. Quite, quite unique, really. Papers to uh, look at. Was there was another person's name, but he changed his name to um, become famous that he was, and uh, he was one of the bandits, the many bandits. The Poncho Villa. 1818, they had a reward for him. I'm not sure if he was caught or not. In a work work tool shed, and the beautiful poinsettias, and another hacienda um, up on the top there. Three main different types of ve ve vegetation here. We've got um, the banana tree. We have their type of pine tree. It's quite pretty, really. We'll get a little closer on that. We'll just have a good look at what that. The branches are quite soft, and they do have pine trees on them. <laughs> is that us? And the third thing is the cactus. Quite beautiful. And time for us to head on back. The thing is, once they 
were able to get the, uh, the metal they were wanting, the silver out of the ground. It took five days and five nights by mule to take it to where they were able to sell it. Uh, that's probably why the mules didn't live very long. Plus, they were worked quite hard for their uh, to separate it and to bring it up to the earth. When the first settlers came here, they had a lot of trouble getting um, to where the really good metals were because it was lower down in the mountain and there was a lot of water. So they were not able to get to the main source of um, metal they were after, the silver and copper. And so later on, the British and the French came with their machinery and were able to get into that minerals that uh, were lower down in the water and was the waters pumped up and they were able to get to the real uh, main source of metal. A bit more picture of us leaving here. Beautiful, beautiful building. And the point feathers on the way out. And the archway. Very, very old archway. And so this, this in here, I can't really see it too much, but there's windows in there, and there's also guns to protect the bridge, to keep um, the people out from coming in and going into the hacienda. It's all hidden in there. And then there's the bridge, and... Uh, ...business up here. Coffee was a very popular thing to ship. Why? Because you process your coffee until a green bean, and that green bean is filled in a sack, almost missing his roasting. And those sacks with green coffee beans, they were shipped all over the world, senores. Yeah? And you can ship them 20 times around the world, they're not gonna waste. <laughs> they're not gonna change no more. Mm -hmm. And that is the interesting thing. The time it's roasted, after you roast the coffee, it stays fresh for one year. But you could ship it all your life, all over, senores, yeah, as a green bean. And that is the interesting thing. So it was a very popular thing before there was refrigeration or anything mm, on the ships. Yeah. You see what I mean? Coffee, coffee place like that. Or a organic. No, no. You tell off whatever you want because nobody cares about it, right? Mm -hmm. So, senores, the coffee is organic. Almost all of its coffee is yeah. Arabic. And I told you that one has the power. And the Arabic coffee is so powerful, has so much caffeine, you cannot process it with all its caffeine. <laughs> so that's why it's okay to give volume with the robust. You see what I'm saying? Huh? The robust coffee almost has nothing but it has a lot of beans, mm -hmm. and that's good. And it doesn't change the flavor of the Arabic one, but to process and dry, the, the coffee is sun dried. You have to spread it out in the sun. If it rains on the coffee while it dries, it ruins the coffee, mm -hmm. right? It will suck water. Mm -hmm. And then it's underwater, it's just like peaches and things like that. They have no more flavor. You mm -hmm. can still brew it, but then it tastes like water, right? So the coffee picking 10 people, eight people he hires, two people from family, they all have a basket like that. Everybody has his area. They visit the same plants every day and they go, and pick all the red ones from the green ones. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Right? It's very simple. You can only harvest the ripe ones. Right? You can all go in a basket. And then how you take the good beans away from the bad ones? Just like beans, lentils, rice. What do you do? You throw mm. it in water. Yeah. If one pit doesn't develop in there, an air bubble is in the husk. And air will swim on top, senores. So that is the thing. Yeah. Every, every Part of the side of the wall going into the side of the hill. It's all open. And uh, it's very cool in here. It's quite nice and warm. Yeah. Yeah. It's decorations. And then there's two tables of us sitting here having food. We've had homemade tortillas and chicken. Oh, yes, there's a real and rice. They've been giving us really good service. It's very, very very, very, very lovely. So the food's been awesome. And we're very much enjoying of the restaurant.
they have a beautiful shrine at the top here. Coming up to the limousine. <laughs> Eric, Linda, and Bryce getting on the limousine. And okay, because those guys oh, eh, built the first hacienda up here. He was the owner of the first oh, mines yeah. up here, right? And uh, and basically and basically and basically throughout uh, throughout the years. And her grandfather, he. He was the owner of that hacienda right here. That's her family. Look at that. That's her. That's their hacienda. That's the ruin we saw. There you see those. We're now in uh, San Sebastian in the uh, town plaza, the main center of it. It's a circular area where people come to meet. There's a gazebo uh, and gardens so. I think we're the only ones. and uh, fencing. Maui, Maori. Maui, Maori. Oh. Oops, someone's coming in. What are they? The pantalon naranjo, ven? Ven? Donde fui? In um, San Sebastian. It's beautiful. It's the tallest building in the city. And that's how people in the earlier years knew where they were. They could see the top of the church. And of course, the Catholic church was very rich then and had the biggest, most uh, beautiful building. Now it is just amazing. Even in the church, they had uh, guns, places for guns, so that to protect the town. So there's gun gun holders along the top of the church. Amazing idea, really, when you think of it. What, what a great idea. One of the side streets outside of the church. Beautiful walkways of stone. We've been walking on. Most of, most of what we've come into San Sebastian has had this amazing walkway. Middle. Beautiful bandstand area in the middle. So, quite beautiful. And then around it is a flower garden. People are visiting and travel agents said there were a lot of people back in town for New Year's. They come back to bring the New Year in with their family. And usually there's about 570 people that live here. There really isn't much industry here anymore, so a lot of the families are separated where the husband's gone out to get work in um, other places. Left here. Drag again. 
where the stores are. Apparently this area years ago was used as a meeting place for the Spaniards to come and meet. Um, the Spaniard meets me a Maria Spaniard. And now it's uh, a place where everyone comes. We're back in the main square. I was looking for Linda and Bryce, couldn't find them, but I have now. There they are. Probably a look around, see things out. Mentioning uh, how neat the centerpiece of the gardens is with the pigeons on it, all lined up on this side. <laughs> And uh, very ornate kind of butchering on it. Get it here. Sorry. Get that. Beautiful. And then you, to the contrast of buildings that are somewhat plain. Right, trying to find it here. Oh, there are plain sort of buildings with the pine tree bushes below. In front, in behind, with lights and the pine tree. The pine trees on all of the mountains. Quite, quite amazing. Of course, the center point of the whole area is the beautiful steeple on the church. Look around. Shortly, we'll be heading back to the uh, back to the uh, cruise ship. Yep.